I get questions all the time from viewers like you asking me, how do I film my adventure videos? What camera gear am I using? How long does it take me to edit? Well, I thought in this video it would be fun to do a little behind the scenes on how I film my adventures. I think we got a lot to talk about that you might find interesting. This should be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of the behind the scenes stuff, the tips and tricks that I do to film my adventure videos to hopefully inspire you to film your next adventure. Trail Recon started five years ago when my sons and I would just go out and have an adventure and we just wanted a video documentary of that. And we didn't know anything about filming or video editing and so those first videos are a little rough so I don't recommend you go back and watch those. But the new ones I think were a little more refined, a little more polished, they've turned out pretty good. And so there's some things that we do now that we've learned that I wanna share with you you, and I think they'll be very helpful to inspire you. Now, full disclosure, I don't have any professional training in videography or editing. Uh, I'm all on the job trained out here. So these are just the things that have worked for me over the years, and I think you'll find them very helpful. If anything, at least you'll know what's going on behind the camera the next time you watch one of the adventure videos. Okay, before we can start filming out here on the trail, there's some prep work we need to do back at home. So let's head back there. Let me show you what I got to do first. Well, welcome to the Trail Recon Workstation. This is where I spend many hours doing some video editing, which we'll talk about at the end of the video here. But it's important to talk about the things I do before I leave, and that is doing a little bit of homework, which you should do anytime you go set out on a trail, but I do probably a little more than most because I wanna see if there's any historical information about the town, or maybe the trail has some cool history, maybe there's some scenic spots along the way, and so I will take a whole lot of notes and put those down to make sure I'm reminded about things when I'm out filming. In fact. I do outlines for every video. This is actually the outline for the video you're watching right now. I don't write a script, but I want to make sure that I'm organized when I'm out filming. It just makes the video flow a little more. I also make sure I'm on the web and I check any filming restrictions and specifically drone restrictions. You'll notice a lot of my videos, I'm not flying the drone very often and that's usually because the FAA says, nope, you can't fly there. So knowing before I leave is very helpful. Now, one of the most important things I do before I leave is figure out who I'm going with because when you are out on a trip and you are filming it, the people that are with you need to understand kind of what's up. Hey, we're going to be stopping from time to time just to grab some footage. Now, I do my best to keep the flow of the convoy moving, but we do have to stop for a few minutes here and there just so I can set up and go. Uh, it's I've gotten pretty good at uh, being quick about it. And you know, at the end of the day, I want to enjoy the venture. I don't want it to feel like it's work. And so I don't want my friends, Marco, Eric, Josh, all those guys to feel like, oh, this is just going way too slow. It's super inconvenient. We usually keep the flow going pretty good. Okay, why don't we take a look at the camera gear? We're not gonna get too technical, but I'll show you what I'm using. All right, now we're gonna talk about camera gear, which is something that folks ask me about a lot. And to be honest, I am not a camera geek. I know a little enough about cameras to make me dangerous and to make some pretty decent videos. So I'm gonna take you through what I use, uh, but understand that the gear I'm using is simple. It's gotta be lightweight, compact, and it's gotta be rugged because it's gonna get beat up in the back of the vehicle uh, pretty bad. Now this is stuff I've purchased over the years. We've gone through a few iterations of stuff. I mean, we started filming just on our phone, then we upgraded to different GoPros, and now we're using these Canon DSLRs. This is the Canon 80D, and this films in 1080p, and then you are watching me on a Canon 90D, which films in 4K. Now, I don't upload videos in 4K, I upload everything in 1080p, but what I like about the ability to film in 4K is I can zoom in and zoom out, probably like I just did right there, without losing a whole lot of quality in the video, whereas if I was to do that with the, the 80D and 1080p, I would, it would get a little blurry. So I like the option to do that. Now, when you are filming in 4K, you need a bigger SD card, memory card, and your computer needs to be able to handle the processing needed for filming in 4K. So just things to think about, but both good cameras, very durable, I like them a lot. Uh, I am using the 18 to 135 millimeter on both of those. I like that lens, it's not super heavy, but it still allows me to zoom in and zoom out when I'm out on the trail, get a little depth of field right there. I love using DSLR cameras. When I finally upgraded to a DSLR, man, it really just transformed the video, the quality, the picture, just so much better. Uh, as far as microphones go, on top here is just a small little Rode microphone. I think it's a video mic 
Go or something is what it's called. I used to use a powered microphone that was bigger uh, and I was always worried that the battery on it would die. And so these just plug right in, there's no battery. And honestly, the audio quality on these is you can barely tell a difference from the old one. Uh, I like these. Don't use your internal camera microphone. It's not good. You need to use an external microphone. And having a dead cat like this, this little furry guy on here, is going to help reduce a lot of wind noise. You're going to get wind noise when you're outside filming on your adventure, and being able to get rid of some of that will be helpful. Uh, you're, if you're going to film in a high wind area, I mean, sometimes there's just nothing you can do, and wind will destroy your audio. There's not much you're going to be able to do about that in post. A little bit here and there, but not much. Uh, on the microphone I'm wearing right now is a Ceramonix lavalier mic. Normally, I would have this all tucked away and hidden, but because we're talking about gear, I figured I'd have this out. I like having uh, a lavalier mic because it allows you to get that nice, crisp sound when you're talking on camera, especially when the camera's far away like it is right now. If I was to put this microphone on there and record, there would be kind of a little echo. You would hear that a little bit. It. Um, this is pr more practical, just run and go. This you have to kind of set up and you know all that kind of stuff. There's a little more involved to it. But doing something in the garage here or in an interview out on the trail or just talking to somebody, uh, the lavalier is the way to go. Okay, uh, so camera, microphone, stabilizer. Image stabilization is your best friend. And this here is the the Zhiyun, Zhiyun, I don't know how to say it, to be honest with you, uh, but what I know, this is the Crane 2, and this thing is awesome. I've been using this gimbal for well over two years. This thing is very durable. I actually was gonna upgrade to the Ronin S, I think it is, uh, and I used it for a little bit. I actually ended up sending it back. I'm very happy with this one. You know, when you are out filming and you wanna get down low, you wanna get up high, or you're running upside, along a vehicle or something, you're just gonna be nice and smooth. Nobody likes shaky video, and having a good gimbal that's small, compact, and light is perfect. Uh, some of the newer DSLR gimbals, they're starting to add like extra arms on them, they're getting a little bulkier. For me, I need something that's small and light, and that's why I still use the Crane 2. I'm pretty happy with that one. So there's uh, camera, microphone stabilization. Oh, we should probably talk about the GoPros that I'm using. I am using uh, the Hero Black 7s. These are great. I've gone through several GoPros. I do have two now. Uh, what I like about the GoPro 7 and now the new 8 is they added that image stabilization and they improved the microphones in there. The older ones were, it was tough. You had to put these on a gimbal and uh, you needed to add an external microphone. Now you can just walk around like this and film. Uh, it's not the best way to do it because the color you're going to get uh, with the GoPro, you need to do some stuff in post and you're not gonna get a good depth of field. Uh, GoPros have their purpose, especially for mounting on the vehicle and doing some other stuff where you, know, you don't wanna damage your camera. These are great to have, and I use these sparingly. I don't use them often, I use them sparingly. Uh, the other camera I have is the one that goes in the air, and so this is the DJI Mavic 2 Zoom, and I, and I love this little drone. I wish I could fly it more often. I love how compact it is. Uh, it sets up super fast, and I got the one that comes with the screen already set up with it. You don't have to connect your phone, and so I can have this thing up in the air ready to go in about a minute, which is perfect. You know, I mentioned that I don't wanna hold up the convoy. I wanna get things going and roll. That allows me to get up and roll and fly. It's great. Uh, some of the other little accessories here, uh, I do have a suction cup mount for the GoPro. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the trail. Uh, batteries, batteries, batteries. Make sure you have plenty of batteries for all your cameras. I have extras for everything you see here. I may or may not have not been able to finish a video once in the past because I ran out of camera battery. Uh, having a little um, remote control for the camera is nice, especially when you have to do a bunch of retakes. You can just sit here and snap, turn the camera on and off. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, tripods, I, I really am not a tripod snob. I'm not a camera snob. Uh, I could care less uh, what brand these tripods are. I just need a tripod that works, that it holds my camera solid, and I actually have two different ones, and I honestly, before right now, I couldn't even tell you what the names of them were. Um, so there you go. That is the summary of the camera gear I use. Well, now, what do you say we go out on the trail and use some of this stuff? So the most common and the easiest method of filming your adventure is using a GoPro or some kind of action cam mounted on a suction cup mount like this uh, on the windshield, and that allows you to just kind of film and go, and it's very easy to do. The only challenge with that is you don't really get a good feel for the surrounding area and the terrain Plus, with the GoPro and just staring out the window, that can 
I don't know, it doesn't get very exciting after a while. I use that footage very sparingly. I like to film outside the vehicle a whole lot more. But a couple things you can do is, if you get a mount like this on a swivel, then that allows you to flip it around and you can talk to the folks, which is really cool. Sometimes you can just share what's going on around you and with the vehicle and the terrain. People like to hear about that kind of stuff. Also, you could pop this out and do some filming on the side window or maybe you know film out the back so you can see what's going on over there. Or if you've got somebody with you, well, you can hop out, use the GoPro and film the vehicle going by. But we'll talk a little bit more about filming vehicles going by with the other camera here in a second. Now, a, one thing I will mention with the GoPro is I like to mount it on the inside because that gives me full control of being able to turn it on, turn the recording button on and off. Sometimes if you put it outside, you're kind of just going to have to turn it on, record and go, which that's not very convenient because you really don't want hours and hours of just point of view footage. Also, the lens will get a little dirty, might get muddy, your camera's better protected on the inside. Just make sure, pro tip here, that your windows are clean. I always carry some Windex and paper towels with me. All right, let's do some filming on the outside. Now, filming outside of the vehicle is where I get excited, trying to figure out some cool ways to film the vehicle going down the trail, the scenery, the terrain, just what's going on around you. That's what's exciting about the adventure, and that's what people want to see. Now, if you're by yourself, you're kind of limited, right? It's easy to throw the GoPro up on the windshield and hit record, but you can take a camera and throw it on a tripod and set it out and drive by. Now, it's a little more work because that means basically you've got to run ahead, set up the camera, hit record, run all the way back to your vehicle, drive by, get out, grab the camera, turn it off. It's a lot of work, but it will pay off because people will appreciate being able to see where you're at. And so there's a couple things you can do. One, adjust the height of the legs. One shot, maybe get low. Another shot, get tall. One shot, be up close to the vehicle, you know, and we get the tires going over the terrain. And then maybe the next shot, put the camera far back. And that way you can see the whole area where the Jeep is going or vehicle. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be Jeep specific, but you know what I'm talking about. Get creative with it. How can you use this tool to get different perspectives? It doesn't always have to be the vehicle driving at you. Maybe turn it around and you're driving away or driving side past the camera. A lot of different options by yourself. You can do this, but just know you're going to be putting in some miles running back and forth. Okay, so you can have a lot of fun with the GoPro and you can have a lot of fun doing the tripod setup, but it's a lot of running around. It's really helpful when you have your son or your wife or a good buddy or somebody else that's willing to drive the vehicle so you can run around with the gimbal. This is my favorite tool for when I'm filming the adventures because this keeps things nice and steady because nobody likes to watch shaky video. I mean, sometimes a little bit of that so people can understand what the terrain is like, but to watch shaky video that wasn't meant to be shaky, you don't want that. Having some buttery, smooth footage using a gimbal that's the way to go. And what I like is, you know, I can get on the radio, you need right, to have buddy, good comms, right. uh, talk to my son Bring and it. say, hey, all right, you're ready to go, let's go. He'll move, he'll know how far to go, I can tell him when to stop. And then while he's driving by, I'm gonna get in there and I'll show you here in a second, and I'm gonna be dynamic. So I'm gonna move with the vehicle, I'm gonna come at the vehicle, maybe I'll have him drive and I'll walk away from him. You're gonna see the difference here on how some of this footage looks compared to just putting it on a tripod and filming. Now I get creative and this is where I like to find those really cool shots. Let's see if we can get a couple. All right, you ready? Yeah, let's go. Do it. All right, you ready for this rut? Yeah, I'm ready. Come on up. So who'd have thought that filming the filming would be challenging. This has been an interesting dynamic doing this because we're actually setting a tripod up so we can set a tripod up to film or to set a tripod up to me to use the gimbal. It's been kind of fun trying to figure this all out. Hopefully it's coming across okay. All right, 
look, uh, there are some other things that you can do to not only just show the vehicle, but show where you're at. I mean, we are in a beautiful place here with some amazing mountains and scenery. There's some beautiful plants out in this area. Capture some of those when you're out filming. Don't just focus on the vehicle and the trail, but get some of the scenery. Also, when you're inside the vehicle, you know, some cool things you can do is film the driver holding the steering wheel and the, the movement of the steering wheel a little bit, or maybe film the navigation and give some perspective on my, where you might actually be. Those are interesting elements to kind of throw in the mix of the video to kind of mix it up a little bit. Also, there's some things that you can do that aren't really vehicle specific. What are you doing when you're out at camp or People are standing around talking and laughing, or maybe you're airing up or airing down or something breaks out on the trail. You always wanna capture those little elements and throw those into the video as well. People love to see what's going on all around the vehicle and through your entire adventure. Okay, there's some filming elements. Let's take some of those pieces. Let's go sit down at the computer and let's do a little bit of video editing. So you can have a lot of fun filming out on the trail if you just try to get creative. Think about different ways to get shots of the vehicle. Don't do the same shot all the time and you'll have fun with it. I have fun with it. Okay, now we are back inside at the workstation and it's time to upload all that video and start editing it. And some people say, well, this is work. And they'd be right, it is a lot of work. In fact, this video is from my recent Death Valley trip and there are 527 video clips from that trip. It's a lot. This took me about 14 hours to edit, but that's because of what I do. This is a 26 minute video, it takes a while. It doesn't need to take you that long to edit a video. And I'm gonna give you just a three helpful tips on video editing. We're not gonna do a full crash course on video editing. I'm just gonna give you a couple of suggestions so when you sit down to edit your video, these will help you create a nice, easy flowing video. Now, before we talk about that, let me just mention this is uh, an iMac with a secondary screen and the software I'm using is Final Cut Pro. I'm using Final Cut Pro because we started using iMovie years ago uh, and it was just an easy transition I like Final Cut Pro. I don't know how to use most of it, but there's still a lot of functionality that I'm still learning about each and every day, which is kind of fun for me. I also have an external microphone because I like to do narration. Sometimes there are things you forget to talk about, or there's just something that it just makes more sense to narrate it when the vehicles are going down the trail and you're talking about where you're at. Being able to do some narration really adds a nice element to the video. So those are the basic tools that I have here. Uh, and make sure it's a comfortable place because you might find yourself spending a little bit of time here. You gotta, you gotta, spend some, you gotta put the time in to make a good video. Okay. The first suggestion that I'm going to tell you is keep your segments short. And what I mean by that is there are 527 of these. Some of these are 30 to 60 seconds long, but I'm only going to use three to five seconds of each of those segments. And then I'm going to piece them all together. Because if you think about when you're watching something, well, you don't want to see the same thing for 30 seconds. You don't want to watch a truck going down the trail for 30 seconds from the same perspective and then coming back at you for another 30 seconds. You want to see different angles and, you, and it just needs to be short. You can, you can tell a story very quickly. Your eye catches something very fast. And so you can see three to five seconds something and be like, oh yeah, I got that. And then give a different angle. Oh yeah, that's different. Just think about that. It doesn't have to be long segments. Keep them short and let it kind of all blend together. One thing I tell my buddies is when we're out on a trail, we're going over an obstacle. It's like, look, not everybody's vehicle is going to get shown going over the obstacle because I don't need to show every vehicle. I show a couple vehicles from different angles and that gives the viewers a good understanding of, oh, I kind of get a feel for how that obstacle is. I didn't need to see every vehicle come over it and come over it and come over it and come over it because it gets a little boring after a while. Uh, okay, so keep your segments short. That's tip number one. Tip number two is watch your transitions. So when you go from one clip to the next clip to the next clip, you want it to be pretty smooth. And there's a lot of transition tools, at least in Final Cut Pro, and I would say stay away from most of them because when you start talking about swirls and flipping boxes and all that kind of stuff, it distracts from the actual video. There's actually only two transitions that I usually use, and one is the fade to black, and the one is the cross dissolve. Those are the two that I use the most, and the reason is because they don't distract from the actual picture. It just takes me from one place to the next. Most of the time, it's just a straight cut. If the lighting is the same, the environment is the same. It's okay to just do a cut from one to the next and that works out pretty easy. So short segments, watch your transitions. The next thing, and this is so important, people forget about this, is 
your audio. We talked about the different microphones, but your audio needs to be good. And so if you're out filming and you've got a bunch of wind noise or maybe somebody's brakes were squealing, I've had this happen, uh, you don't want that to come across on the audio. So what you do is you drop the volume and then maybe what you can do is either A, you're narrating during that time or you throw in some music. Um, I like to put music in as a supplement. I don't like that to be the dominant thing. In the beginning, some of my videos were that way. I didn't know what I was doing, I was learning. Now you just hear, you know, the tires crunching on the rocks and a little bit of music is underlying, which I think works really well. Be careful where you get your music from. Early on, I used to get my music for free, did the free downloads. Uh, I had some copyright issues I had to deal with way back when. Um, thankfully, now I have a subscription to a music service, plus I'll buy the license to use music from time to time so I don't run into any stuff. Plus, usually when you pay for it, you get better quality music and it's easier to find what you want. When you go with the free stuff, you're very limited on, you know, you're gonna get some techno or you're gonna get some rock. Whereas, you know, you go online, you can kind of Google search music and get really what you want. I like having music subscriptions. So so there you go. All right. Those are three tips that I think will help you. Let me give you a fourth one. And that is sit down and just do it. Don't be scared to edit. People are shy away. They film all this footage. I hear this all the time. They film all this footage and they never do anything with it. Make some time, sit down and edit it. The more you do it, the easier it'll get and the better you will get at it. And so with that said, I hope that this entire video has inspired you to want to go film an adventure and put a video together. And if you decide to do that, please, let me know. I would love to check it out. Let me know in the comments down below or send me uh, an Instagram message and I will go check out your video. I would love to see what you're creating out there. I think we can always learn from each other. If you have recommendations for maybe some other folks on some things I didn't talk about on this video because I'm just an on-the-job training kind of guy, put those in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching.